Lord, let me be the player they want me to be. Let me be the player I know I can be. Lord, let me bring a Super Bowl to this fan base. I ask you for good times and happiness, to have the strength and energy to come out here and work, and allow me to be a light to my teammates. Von Miller chooses the Buffalo Bills. Is number 40 available. The more I think of this deal, the more I kind of love it. And I love that the Bills did this. Love, 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 love this time. It's the yep. Von Miller effect. Yeah. We can beat anybody. That is why. Von Miller is a go for it. I think he is the finishing touch. A legit Super Bowl contender. One step away from a Super Bowl. That he's won two Super Bowls and been an MVP. That means something in the locker room. And it had to be something special. It had to be this. It had to be the Buffalo Bills and, you know, what they've created here. It feels like this whole thing is years in the making. I mean, if you go back to my draft, I was supposed to be a Bill. The Denver Broncos select Von Miller. It felt like all this time, Buffalo has been trying to choose me. But this time, the choice was mine. And yeah, I heard the stories. I know the history. I know y'all carry a lot of pain. Wide right. No good. Wide right. The Music City Miracle. What a devastating way for Buffalo to lose. 13 seconds. It was over with 13 seconds to go. Bruh, it. Burn it all. Gotcha, the run. Jumps over a man. He hurdles and picks up the first down. Allen on the move. Out into the end zone. Back in the end zone. Touchdown. Delivers. What a play! Intercepted! Micah Hyde! A sliding catch made by Hyde! Over the middle! Intercepted! Jordan Poyer! Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Down the middle to the end zone! It is Davis! Remarkable! I mean, this team has what it takes to get to the Super Bowl. Trust me, I've been there. Do I want another ring? Hell yeah, I do. But it's really about more than me. It's about Buffalo. I came to Buffalo to be a difference maker for a franchise that's been so close so many times, for the Hall of Famers, for my teammates that laid the foundation, for a fan base that deserves a Super Bowl parade. Bills Mafia, I want to be all that for you because I know what that'll mean to you. And that means everything to me. Hey, what's up, fam? Great to have you guys with us here today. We're excited. It's the kickoff service. You know, this time of year, it's the time when the NFL, it's a big football kickoff all across the nation. Everybody's excited about their teams. And if you're joining with us online from somewhere else, I'm sorry, it's going to be a little Buffalo Bill-centric today. Now, we're not going to be crashing any tables. Nobody's jumping in the tables today, right, guys? We'll save that for when we win the Super Bowl. But uh, today, we're going we're gonna to celebrate. We're all wearing our Bills gear here in Western New York. You may be wearing the gear of your team wherever you are, but it's great to have you with us. Today, we're going to talk about kicking off our faith. And maybe you're at a place in your life where you need to maybe get back to where your faith needs to be. Or maybe you're just figuring it out now and you want to get it. So today is going to be a day where you can kick off your faith. And we'll look at a little bit of what it's going to take to be able to get there. You know, really, at the beginning of every year, what is the goal for every football team? What is the goal that every fan of their team wants? Well, it's to win the Super Bowl, right? It's, I don't think anybody goes, oh, yeah, I'm so excited about this year. I, I hope we end up at, like, 500, or I hope we end up in last place. Oh, man, everybody's like, this is the year, yeah, the Super Bowl. You know, everybody, that's the goal we want. But as Christians, our goal is to go to heaven. That's our goal. And so we may learn a few things that would help a team achieve their Super Bowl goal, but we're going to focus on spiritually what we can do to reach our goal of giving to heaven. I want to begin here in Philippians chapter 3. And as the Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Philippi, he is imprisoned at this time. He's under house arrest, and he writes this letter to them. And he's writing this letter to inspire and encourage the church. And so it's kind of funny because he's the one that's under arrest, but he's inspiring them. He's encouraging them. It's such an encouraging letter. But there are some really important lessons here that we can learn in order to get to our Super Bowl to get to heaven. He says here in Philippians 3, beginning in verse 12, Not that I have already reached the goal or am already perfect, 
But I make every effort to take hold of it because I also have been taken hold of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead, I pursue my goal to, as the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let all of us who are mature think this way. And if you think differently about anything, God will reveal this also to you. In any case, we should live up to whatever truth we have attained. Join in imitating me, brothers and sisters, and pay careful attention to those who live according to the example you have in us. For I have often told you, and now say again with tears, that many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. And they are focused on earthly things. Our citizenship is in heaven. And the church said, amen, right. And we eagerly await a savior from there to Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humble condition into the likeness of his glorious body by the power that enables him to subject everything to himself. And so... Paul's encouraging them then to, to get there, to be with Jesus at the end. But he gives an important principle here. And one that is so important to all of us. You know, we, kind of, we watched that Bill's hype video in the beginning, right? Von Miller's letter, Dear Buffalo, right? Man, did you guys get chills when you were watching that? Maybe not if you're elsewhere, but in Buffalo, we got chills. And we we're excited by it. But, you know, the thing that was great is when he says, I know you've been through a lot of pain. And he mentions all the tough losses the Bills have faced. But then he just turns it to camera and says, bruh, burn it all. I mean, he's like, just burn it all. Just like Paul says, forgetting what is behind. But it's like, burn it all. Burn all those past defeats. Burn all that bad history there. Forget about it. And that's exactly what Paul is saying to us here. One thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead. And that's so important for us as Christians, that we burn the past. That no matter what mistakes or whatever sin, whatever we've had in our past, whether it was a, a bad week, a bad day yesterday, a bad year, maybe a bad bunch of years, burn it. Burn it all. Get rid of it. Forget what is behind and focus on the future. This is the thing. There are people in life who may never forgive you for something you've done because people aren't perfect. They don't love like God. There are situations that you may have to face consequences because of sin. But with God, we have the opportunity to burn the past. Jesus dying on the cross gave us that opportunity. He opened up the door for us that we could be forgiven from anything in our past, any past sins, any mistakes. God can forgive us. You know, that's why as a church, as Vessel Church, our our logo is the pot with the crack signs in it because we, we came across something called kintsugi. It's an ancient art. You see, in, in, in past days, when they would send pottery or vases or something somewhere, a lot of times when it was shipped, it would crack and it would get there and be in a few different pieces, which would make it worthless. But there were some people who created a thing called kintsugi where they would take the pieces, glue them back together, but the glue was gold. And so as you can see from the picture here, it not only looked cool, but it made it much more valuable because it was lined with gold. And you see, that's what exactly God does for us. God allows us, though we were broken, though we may be in pieces, though we might have a tough history and sin and mistakes, God can make us new. We are that kintsugi. He can make us brand new despite our past mistakes. Now, for all you Buffalo Bills fans, We've gone through some tough pasts, right? And that's why we just needed to have this Bill's Kintsugi logo <laughs> to know they've been remade, right? You know, for us here in Western New York, we're so excited because when Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean took over as coach and general manager, they just had an attitude of coming in. The past doesn't matter. We're beginning new. We're going to build a new culture. We're going to start. We're going to build it. We're going to forget the past, and we're going to go on to victory. And the whole saying they had along the way, most of you guys can remember this in Western New York, trust the process. You know, when they first came in, they got rid of a lot of the superstars on our team because they weren't team players and it was hard. But why are you getting rid of that great player? Trust the process. 
You know, many times as Christians, God takes us down a road or God teaches us in the Bible that we need to respond to a situation in a certain way. And in the short term, it's like, yeah, but it looks like that's harder. How can we do that? Trust the process. It may take time. But if we trust the process, we can have victory. You know, the Buffalo Bills had a 17-year playoff drought. 17 years we in Western New York suffered without making the playoffs, being a laughingstock, feeling the pain. But you know, when these guys came in with that attitude of forgetting the past and starting new, we had some victory. And I want to show you a clip real fast, a video, to see the Bills locker room. The situation was, hadn't made the playoffs in 17 years. The new guys took over. They had a pretty good run, but at the end of the season, they won their final game. They did what they needed to do, but they needed a miracle. They needed the Cincinnati Bengals to beat the Baltimore Ravens. It was the end of the game. It's all the Bills players in the locker room watching that game. It was fourth down and 12 yards to go. It was like an impossible situation, and yet you'll see the incredible joy and enthusiasm that came from the victory. From watching a miracle happen to put them in the playoffs to seeing grown men crying and jumping up and down like children. And for me, I know every time I watch this, I get chills. I get inspired. Check it out. great wasn't it and it was just the start we made the playoffs we broke it up but then they kept growing and kept doing it last year you know the patriots had owned us for so long the new england patriots and last year i remember before the playoff game against them they had beat us pretty good during the year and we faced them in the playoffs and i remember jordan poyer i love jordan poyer amen (laughs) he uh, he got the team together he goes man i'm sick of it look at those guys look at those cocky heads it's time to end it it's an end of an era for them tonight an end of an era And he got his guys fired up to forget the past, and it was. And they went on to victory, and we were all like, yes! It was growth. You see, for all of us, if we truly want to reach our Super Bowl of heaven, the first thing we need to do is burn the past. Burn it all. Get past it. Forget about what's behind and move toward the future with God, with Jesus. We have the opportunity to do that, to start fresh, to begin anew. Because that's what grace is all about. Burn the past. And the second thing is, where do you go? Okay, you burn the past. What's next? God, we get what? Okay, that's gone. That's good. Now what? The second point is simply fan the future flame. Second Timothy chapter one. Now the apostle Paul is writing to Timothy, a young man who he trained to be an evangelist. And it's near the end of Paul's life. He's writing this letter basically for, to Timothy to encourage him to kind of take it over the ministry. And in 2 Timothy chapter 1, beginning of verse 6, this is what Paul says. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Man, he says, fan it in the flame. You know, it might just be a little flicker. You get rid of the junk, and it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to try, God. I just got a little flicker of faith here. He said, you got to fan that in the flame. You got to fan that in the flame to make it grow. Because you can't just sit there empty. I want to show you an example. I shared this with some friends. Because we all have baggage, you know. When we first come to God, and we, and we first want to be able to, to come to faith, we want to get ourselves right, we all have baggage. We have mistakes, skeletons in the closet, tough things that we have to deal with. And so God says to burn that past, to clean it out. So, you know, every time we come to God, this is is our life. We're filled with junk, dark stuff, stuff we regret. It's inside of us. It's hard to deal with. God says burn it. God says forget the past. Get rid of it. Like so, right? And so here we are. But here's the problem. We're now empty. No one likes to feel empty. So we have to do something with it. And what God says is, fill yourself up, fan into flame that faith. And what we got to do is we got to fill ourselves up with the good stuff, guys. Fill ourselves up with love, 
Fill our stuff up with passion. Fill our stuff up with purpose. Fill our stuff up with all that good stuff so we're no longer empty, but we're fulfilled. We're ready to go on with life because we have a purpose. We know we're loved. We have satisfaction and, and a fulfilled life. God wants to do that for us. But you can't just sit there empty after you burn your past. You got to fill yourself up with some good stuff. Fan into flame. But how do we do that? Well, it takes some work. You know, if you've ever tried to get a small fire going, you got to work, right? Put some kindling in there, blow on it, fan it in the flame. You got to work it, but then it gets cooking, right? And you're like, yeah. It's like, but it takes a little bit of work to get that fan into a future flame. We can't fire, just focus on the past. Fill yourself up with what's coming. Those future, incredible, faithful expectations, right? So scripture here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 says, and since we have the same spirit of faith, in keeping with what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. For we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you. Indeed, everything is for your benefit, so that as grace extends through more and more people, it may cause thanksgiving to increase to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not give up. Even though our outer person is being destroyed, and for those of us who are getting older and struggling with arthritis, we say, amen. It says, although our outer person is being destroyed, our inner person is renewed day by day. For our momentary light affliction is producing for us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. So we do not focus on what is seen, but what on is unseen. For what is seen is temporary what is unseen is eternal. This is what you do. How do you grow? How do you fan that flame? Man, you got to get into the word of God. You, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ. As you read the Bible, your faith grows. As you get into the word and you allow God to talk to you and tell you how much he loves you, tell him how much he believes you, that he tells you more and more your past doesn't matter it's about your future it inspires you and that flicker starts to get into a flame and it starts to burn and it grows and that's through the word of god through prayer so we can focus on the unseen and not just the worldly stuff around us not the lies the devil tells us you know the thing about every new year no matter how bad your football team was last season i don't know what it is for most football fans I know for me, I always try to be an optimist as the season starts because everybody's undefeated when the season starts, right? You're going in, and usually every team makes a few moves to try and get better. And so I'm always like, well, you know, we did improve this. We did improve that. And, I mean, I think we got a shot. And every year, Tracy's like, my wife Tracy, my wife Tracy's like, all right, so, you, okay. You're not going to get your heart hurt now, are you? Because you're getting all excited. But every year, I just, I'm like, man, it could be, though. They made some changes. You never know. And, and it's like this renewed zeal, you know, and excitement for the season. And it's like that. Everybody gets their excitement for their team when there's a new season. That's what we have every day with Jesus. Every day. We can wake up knowing we're forgiven. Our past mistakes don't matter. It's a brand new day because we are renewed day by day by the grace of God. We are renewed by getting into the word and allowing it to sink in deep. So it's important that we're in God's word and studying it so that we can focus on what's unseen. Focus on your future, having a faithful future. Let me tell you something. I know we were all excited to get Josh Allen here in Buffalo. And Josh Allen right here, He's leaping into the future. I mean, that dude is just leaping over dudes, right? And he's famous for seeing the guys doing stuff, breaking all kinds of records all the time. He's leaping into a faithful future. What can God fan into flame for you? What faithful expectations can you have for yourself? Are you ready to do that? Are you ready to step into a faithful future, to fan the future flame? You know, I was uh, so inspired by our, our Sun Chasers group, our single professionals and college students, because, you know, the last few years, uh, the world has turned somewhat anti-God, and it's been very challenging for our church as we share our faith. People seem to be anti-God, and it wasn't politically correct to like the Bible or God, and it got very challenging going out because you get turned down a lot. And, you know, as COVID 
ended and we're opening up again, you know, there was a little trepidation about going back out into the world and sharing our faith, you know, because, man, the past was so tough. But, man, our church got so excited here. That's we got excited and everybody got out. Our sun chasers got on campus and we're sharing our faith. And, you know, this past week we had our worship concert. And it was the largest worship concert we've had in a long time. And the place was filled. All the chairs were filled, right, guys? It was exciting to look back and see all the chairs. I know you guys were excited, but it's because we didn't quit. We were fanning that future flame. We had some faithful expectations, and God came through because we trusted him. And we went back out there, not focusing on the past and letting that dictate our future, but focusing on the future with God with a faithful attitude, and God blessed it. And man, we had a room full of young people, old people, all kinds of people wanting to know God. And that was so inspiring. Guys, we have to have zeal for that future. Fan that future flame into action. Get it going, right? It's like, I, man, when football season comes, I get so excited. You know, my, uh, <laughs> my buddy, little Jack Greer, my friend Jared's son, you know, he, uh, he did this picture a few years back over here, his Jordan Poyer pose and his, and his eye black. And, you know, so many times when the Bills are doing good, I'm, I'm sending that picture around, and that's kind of like our theme picture, right? So he inspired me, so I had to get in on it. So I had to take my picture and get it in there, just like Jack. Because, <laughs> man, we're getting excited about the future. Listen, if you're here with us today, if you're watching online, maybe it's your time to have a kickoff of faith. Maybe it's time for you to rekindle the flames. First of all, you got to burn your past. Just burn it. Burn it all. Get rid of it. And then fan the future flame. Start thinking about the future. Start focusing on God's grace and what you can become and give back your faithful expectations. So you can see great things happen in your life here and then get to that Super Bowl in heaven. My final thought as we take communion together is in Hebrews 12. Verses 28, 29. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. By it, we may serve God acceptably with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. He's a consuming fire. He's a fire big enough to burn any past. He's a fire big enough to flame any future expectations with faith. That's our God. And as we take communion and remember Jesus' death on the cross, shedding his blood and his body, giving it up for us, let us be thankful and let God consume us like what he is, a consuming fire, as we head towards our Super Bowl in heaven. Let's pray. God, we're grateful. We're so grateful to be a part of your family. We're so grateful, God, Father, to be able to just take part in your grace knowing that the past is the past. That's where it belongs. We can learn from it, but we can't live in it. We gotta let it go, burn it all, and focus on the future. Look at that future flame, fan it into power, all through our gratitude that Jesus opened the door for us to do it. We're grateful that you gave your son for us. Pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're very grateful you could be with us. If you're joining us online, man, again, thanks for being with us. Maybe you could become long-distance Buffalo Bills fans. But either way, what's most important is we're fans of Jesus. Amen? And we all reach that spiritual Super Bowl. So thank you for being here with us today. And as always, 
Go Bills. The Bills make me wanna shout. Kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. But come on now, the Bills are making it happen now. Stand up now, come on and shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say you will. Shout it right now, baby. Say you will. Come on, come on. Say you will. Come on and shout. Say you will. Buffalo's happening now, Shout. we're on the moon now, Shout. the fields are happening now, Shout. they're making it happen now, we got the spirit, Shout. a lot of spirit, yeah, we got the spirit, Shout. just watch it happen now, hey, 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 let's go Buffalo, let's go Buffalo, let's go Buffalo, let's go Buffalo, the bills make me wanna Shout.